We present a case of surgical treatment for complex gastroparesis using a robotic assisted approach. The patient is a 57 year old woman with type 2 diabetes referred to our institution following a laparoscopic disinfundification and hiatal hernia repair with biologic mesh. Her chief complaints were dysphagia, nausea, vomiting, and food intolerance and experienced a 20 pound weight loss prior to her preoperative visit. A complete workup was then performed. An upper endoscopy was performed, which pre revealed retained food and a partially intact fundoplication and a previously placed peg tube. Her esophageal motility study was normal, and a CT scan of the abdomen and pelvis was unremarkable. A standardized gastric emptying study was also performed, demonstrating 33% retention of the meal at four hours and glucose values consistent with diabetes. Given the endoscopic findings of retained food in her stomach, the persistence of her gastroparesis symptoms, and the abnormal four-hour nuclear medicine gastric emptying study, it was felt that the patient had significant gastroparesis, likely due to the combination of both post-surgical and diabetic factors. The decision was made to offer sur surgical treatment for this condition, including a robotic-assisted approach of a combined gastric electric stimulator placement and a Heineken Mikulitz pyloroplasty. For the robotic assisted approach, a total of five ports were used demonstrated in the diagram above, including a sub xiphoid port for the Nathanson liver retractor. Because of the patient's existing PET tube site, the generator site for the patient's gastric stimulator was planned in the right lower quadrant. Once trocars and robotic instruments were positioned, the patient's pylorus was identified and using a 10 centimeter silk suture, areas on the greater curvature were marked with cautery measured exactly 10 centimeters proximal to the pylorus. Next, a Heineke Mikulitz pyloroplasty was performed first by performing a coker maneuver of the duodenum, having it fully mobilized. Next, a full thickness enterotomy was made in the duodenum, just distal to the pylorus, and the enterotomy was extended proximally through the pyloric sphincter onto the distal stomach. The pyloroplasty was measured to be approximately five centimeters in transverse length and longitudinal closure in the standard Heineke Mikulitz fashion was then performed. Using robotic instruments, a two layer closure was completed of the pyloroplasty with the first layer being a running suture of a barbed suture material of 2O PDS. Full thickness bites were taken to ensure adequate and secure closure. A second PDS barbed suture was run from the bottom towards the middle of the pyloroplasty to prevent the issue of frame shifting and to ensure adequate closure of the pyloroplasty. Next, using tubo silk sutures in a Limbert style fashion, the pyloroplasty suture line was an oversewn protecting the suture line to help prevent postoperative leakage. Next, using the previously marked sites 10 centimeter from the pylorus, the leads for the gastric stimulator were placed approximately one centimeter apart on the greater curvature as shown here. Once the leads were inserted, an upper endoscopy was performed 
both to confirm the accuracy of lead placement and to ensure that full thickness penetration of the stomach did not occur, and also to ensure the adequacy and security of the pyloroplasty. A leak test was performed by submerging the pylorus under irrigation, and once the duodenum was intubated, he was fully insufflated, demonstrating no leak. Following this, the leads were secured in place by securing the anchoring discs and trumpet anchors to the serosal surface of the stomach, as demonstrated here. Four O silk sutures were used to secure the discs and the trumpet anchors. The patient recovered uneventfully from surgery, was discharged home two days following surgery, and was slowly advanced from a liquid to a solid diet. She's been followed in clinic subsequent to surgery and continues to do well. An upper endoscopy performed nine months post-op revealed a widely patent and well-healed pyloroplasty site, an intact fundoplication, and a small recurrent hiatal hernia. She remains essentially asymptomatic from a reflux and her gastroparesis symptoms have drastically improved. A repeat gastric emptying study has also been performed at nine months postoperatively and it shows accelerated gastric emptying as well as 100% of the meal being emptied into the intestines at four hours.